I'm Dr. Mills. Uh, I'm a chiropractor here in Catanning, and um, some of you here this evening are patients that I get the pleasure to take care of on a regular basis. Some of you are guests. Um, some of you have been brought here maybe by a friend, family member or um, a friend or loved one. So, um, you know, why would someone bring you here? Why would I invite you here? Um, usually people bring something, bring a guest to something like this because, you know, if you're excited about something and something's helped you, who do you think of first? The people you care about the most. Your friends are the people you care about the most, right? And so because they're excited about something and something has helped them and they've got results for something, they thought maybe it would help you. If you're a guest, we want to share a story with you, um, some information that we think is really impactful for your life. And uh, we made the title of tonight's talk, How to Become the Richest Person in the World, because I just think that's interesting. And we live in a culture where... Um, this word rich can be defined in a lot of different ways, right? Um, a lot of people, when they think the richest person in the world, they think of Warren Buffett, right? Everybody's heard the name Warren Buffett. And I always think of that right now because, you know, people would say, oh, I'd love to have, you know, trade places with Warren Buffett. And I think, would you really? I mean, think about it. Right now, Warren Buffett has prostate cancer. You want to trade places with him? Would you take his how many billion dollars to have prostate cancer? See? What, what are the riches about? What, what, what is being the richest person in this world or the richest person for your life? And so we're going to talk about that. But what we want to talk about is what is our most important asset in life, right? I mean, really, if, you, if, if, if I say to you and I am asking you, you can participate if you'd like. What, what is our most important asset in life? Our health. Our health. Right? I can do this talk in another country, Right? And I can say, what's our greatest asset in life? And people unanimously say, health. My question then becomes, what, it, what is your map? What is your, how are you taking care of this precious asset? Um, it's the most important asset in your life. And I'm saying, how are you taking care of it? If we look at how you spend your time, resources, finances, energy, thoughts, are you investing the majority of your thoughts toward your most important asset? Or are you investing a lot of your resources, time, and energies in things that really don't matter? I read a quote recently that said, our greatest fear in life is not failure. Our greatest fear is succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. Isn't that true? How many of us have spent our time and energy succeeding in life at things that really don't matter. See, Warren Buffett's billions of dollars aren't going to buy his way out of this, right? He's going to try, but you can't buy health, can you, right? So that's what tonight is about. It's tonight is about your most important asset in life, and it's your health. This is my family. This is my most important asset in life. Um, that is my wife, Amy. This is my son, Mason. He turns five tomorrow. This is my daughter, Addison. She's three. And this is my son, Nolan. He's seven. Um, he looks good there. He lost a tooth this weekend. He's not, you know. I said, buddy, I don't know what's wrong. I said, daddy's a doctor. He doesn't know what's wrong, but something's wrong. Your teeth keep falling out. You know? <laughs> He's, he, he knows it's okay, it's all good. It, he wants them to come out. It's the way he, he's, he's entrepreneur, he makes money that way. He says, he, he, you pull these teeth out, I make money, you know, yeah, okay. But, you know, think about it this way, and you could do this with your family picture if you wanted, but you know, just blot this guy out of here, right? Take that guy's health out of the equation, right? That's where I need to invest my time, energy, and resources. Because my health is extremely important to those lives, and they are my greatest asset, right? Earthly asset. So, investing in your most important asset. What is health? If I say to people, what is health? How would you know if you're healthy? What do you think? How would you know? What is health? You feel good? You feel good, right? You feel good? Nope, you don't hurt, right? You look good, right? I mean, you're your ideal weight or whatever. I mean, you look at yourself and you say, you know, right? So when I ask that question, what I ask it all the time, I do talks about bi-weekly or more frequently, I say, 
what is health? And people say, well, probably feeling good, not having a disease, how I feel, how I look, right? And I say, yeah, these people, you know, look at that guy, man. He looks good. She looks good, right? I mean, he looks good and they, they feel good. They both look and feel great. But if, that's, if health is how you look and how you feel, then that's the end result. That's the end result of looking and feeling good. Is that health? I think they had riches, right? Uh, I, don't think they, I don't think it was a shortage of money. I don't think it was a shortage of fame. I think they looked pretty good. I mean, I'd like to look like that dude, you know? <laughs> My wife would like me to look like that dude, you know? Um, so, health is not how we look and how we feel. The three greatest cause, the three, the number, th the top three causes of death in the United States are not something you can feel. Isn't that interesting? The top three causes of death in the United States are not something you can feel. The number three cause of death in the United States is heart disease. It kills 550,000 people a year. One in two people die of heart disease. But look, 80% of heart attack victims, the first sign is what? Death. death. Now, I know that the TV shows would like you to think that someone comes over and beats on your chest and you resurrect right there, but um, th that doesn't work like that, right? Um, they've actually researched that and found how statistically off the TV shows are and what percentage of people are saved um, from that. doesn't mean you shouldn't do CPR on a guy. It just means that the reality is these people are walking around doing great, and there's going to be people tonight, tomorrow, that are feeling good. They're going to have a heart attack, aren't they? The number two cause of death is cancer. Approximately 700,000 deaths per year. One in three men, one in two women will die of cancer. $60 billion per year is spent annually for the treatment and research to cure cancer. Who's been, whose life has been affected by cancer in this room? Right? Right? Heart disease or cancer has affected every one of us. Right? Neither one of them are something that you can feel. Can you feel your arteries placking? Can you feel the first cancer cells forming in your body? Right? The reason that this is such a problem is because we have a healthcare system that is based on the fact that we use how we feel to determine whether someone should intervene or do something with their health. People tell me all the time, I feel great. I don't need to get adjusted. Or I feel great. I don't need to exercise or eat good or whatever their, whatever their issue or concern is, right? And I'm here to tell you that how we look and how we feel is an illusion, right? That's what that picture was about. So, five of six people, right? Studies show that five of six people will die from heart disease or cancer if they live in the U.S. Isn't that interesting? Five of six. So that means in this room, statistically, what are our odds of dying of heart disease or cancer? My question then becomes, what are you doing to prevent yourself from being in this situation? What activities, what things are going on? What are you doing to prevent the, you from being this? And you, maybe, you, maybe you like playing Powerball, right? And you say, hey, baby, I'm going to be the one in six, right? Well, guess what? If you're the one in six, what does that mean for the closest people in your life around you, statistically? The They're going to be the other five, isn't it? The people you love the most in life. What is the number one cause of death and injury in the United States? Interesting question, but before we talk about that, we need to talk about what symptoms are. You know, many of us have had symptoms, right? We've had a headache, or we've had arm pain, or we've had shortness of breath, or we've had, you know, elevated blood sugar, high blood pressure, or whatever it is, right? Indigestion, all these symptoms, right? And in our culture, if you have a symptom, what do we do for your symptom? Give you a pill. We take a pill, right? See why? Everybody knows the right answers. <laughs> Every time I ask, I get the right answers. So if you have indigestion, we take a pill. We treat the symptom, right? We don't ask, why do you have indigestion? We say, take this pill and it'll fix your indigestion. We don't say, why do you have a headache? We don't say, why do you have pain shooting down your arm? We don't say, why? 
because we have a pill to fix the symptom. The problem is treating symptoms has led to the number one cause of death in the United States. Approximately 999,000, about a million people will die from medical practice this year in the United States. From prescription drugs and medical care, we'll have about a million people die this year, more than heart disease and cancer. Not because the people in the system are bad, they're not. Not because they're evil, they're not. Because we have a system based around the fact that we don't correct people's health, we treat people's symptoms. And when you treat symptoms, you don't restore health. Because I made your headache go away with a pill does not mean that I corrected the cause of you having a headache. Because I lowered your cholesterol with a pill does not mean I addressed the cause of why your cholesterol is high. Because I gave you a pill that lowered your blood pressure doesn't mean that I corrected the problem that's causing you to have high blood pressure. Right? The people that are dying of heart attacks and strokes are not the people that are not going to their doctor. The people that are dying of heart attacks and strokes go check their paperwork. They're on all the pills. And if they worked, guess what? They shouldn't have died of the heart attack or the stroke. I wrote an article recently, maybe you read it, it says, none of us are getting out alive. <laughs> I got that part. You, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm not delusional. I don't think that we're going to do something and make you live forever. Okay? But the reality is, what do you want the quality of life on this earth to be like? What do you want it to be like? My oldest patient right now that I take care of on a regular basis is 95. And you know what? She wants to feel good. Right? People say silly things to me sometimes like, well, who cares when I'm that old? <laughs> well, you know what? She's that old and she cares. Right? Or they'll say, you got to die of something. Yeah, you do. But being miserable along the way isn't what you want. Right? They're foolish things. They're just thoughts that people really haven't thought through. And I'm not picking on those people. And I'm not, I'm, I may have said those things myself when I was younger, right? But it was just because I really didn't have a perspective and an understanding of my most important asset in life, which is my health. Without that, what good is the things that I enjoy if I can't do them? One million people will die from, unfortunately, our health care system because we treat symptoms and don't correct causes, right? Um, 700,000 people are gonna die of cancer, 550,000 deaths for heart disease. We have to say, what am I doing to not be a statistic, right? What does that mean though, if you think about that? That means if you're taking pills on a regular basis, you're participating in the number one cause of death. Does that make sense, right? So, what is all this going to cost? Because I like thinking of that concept, and the reason I chose the name of the talk is the richest person in the world is because a lot of people think that their greatest asset is going to be their wealth, don't they? Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you without your health, you won't have any wealth, right? Let me read these to you. I'm not reading these to you because I don't think you can read. I just think it's powerful sometimes to read actual quotes so that you understand that this is not my opinion. A recent study reports that a 65-year-old couple retiring in 2012 would need about $240,000 in today's dollars to cover medical expenses through their retirement. That's from CBS News. This number is increasing by 4% annually, which means in 15 years, the total will be over $415,000 you will need in an account to take care of you and your spouse. And listen, these aren't uninsured. These are insured. These are people that their co-pays or their 20% got out of control or they became unable to work because of their illness because they didn't nurture their number one asset. Bankruptcy due to medical bills increased by 50% in a six-year period from from 46% in 2001 to 62% in 2007. And most of those who filed for bankruptcy were middle class, well-educated homeowners, according to a report that will be published in the August issue of the American Journal of Medicine. Interesting. And this is in quotes because this is not me saying this, right? I'm not para this. Unless you're a Warren Buffett or a Bill Gates, you're one illness away from financial ruin in this country, says lead author, Steffi Woolhandler, MD of Harvard Medical School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. If an illness is long enough and expensive enough, private insurance offers very little protection against medical bankruptcy, and that's the major finding in our study. That was actually 
the predominant problem in the patients in our study. 78% of them had health insurance, but many of them were bankrupt anyways because there were gaps in their coverage like co-pays and deductibles and uncovered services. Other people had private insurance but got so sick they lost their jobs and lost their insurance. 62% of bankruptcies in this country are due to a health issue. I'm saying this to you because I hear people all the time that tell me that they think that they're saving money by not taking care of their health. That they somehow think that taking care of their health today is, is wasting money if they don't have a symptom or a disease. Well, I don't have a disease. I feel good. I don't necessarily need to go take care of my health. My answer to that is, according to this research, you're going to pay. You're either going to pay now to take care of your health, or you're going to be forced to pay everything that you've worked your entire life for to try to recover something that it's probably too late to recover. Isn't that interesting, right? People always don't have the time or the money to take care of their health. You will have to make time, and you will have to surrender your money if you don't nurture your health now. And isn't it sad that we've literally created a healthcare system that is so expensive that you can't afford it? What value is a healthcare system that is so expensive that you can't afford it? Right? Is that not what we have created? Is health really that complicated, guys? Really? I mean, honestly. But the reality is, is that the days of your insurance paying for everything for forever are over. They're gone. They don't exist anymore. You would be much wiser to spend some money now to nurture and take care of your most prized asset than you would to have your wealth stripped from you against your will later in life. This is from the Medicare guidelines. I got this from Medicare. You can go check me on this. Chapter 15, section 30, what, dot five dot B, all right? So look it up. And this is what it says. Under the Medicare program, chiropractic maintenance therapy is not considered to be medically reasonable or necessary and is therefore not payable. Maintenance therapy is defined as a, ther as a treatment plan that seeks to prevent disease, promote health, and prolong and enhance the quality of life, or a therapy that is performed to maintain or prevent deterioration of a chronic condition. Well, who wants that? I do. Who wants insurance that would help prevent disease? Who wants insurance that would help promote health? Who wants insurance that would help prolong and enhance the quality of their life? Right? Who wants, uh, if you do have a chronic condition, who wants health insurance to maintain and prevent deterioration of chronic condition? <laughs> right? That's Medicare. That's, that's our, you know, you got to go on this program at 65 Healthcare, guys. Right? They're not here to keep you well. Right? They're not here to take care of your health. It's our responsibility. We have to look in the mirror and say, that guy looking back at me is either going to take care of this vessel or it's not going to get in taken care of. So what is health? If we look at the World Health Organization, it uses Doylan Medical's Dictionary as its definition. It says, a state of optimum physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. It says a state of optimum, physical, my body, mental, my mind, and literally socially, how I interact with other human beings. But look what it says. And it's not merely the absence of a disease. Right? So you can't say, well, I don't have a disease, therefore I must be healthy. They're saying, no, that's not true. We don't want you to be deceived. Just because you don't have a disease doesn't mean you're healthy. So what is health? Health is function. If every cell in my body is functioning at 100% all the time, am I healthy? Yeah. Does that feel good? Maybe not all the time. If I eat some food that's not prepared properly, I might feel pretty rotten a few hours later. But that throwing up and diarrhea and fever and sweating isn't bad. It's exactly what needs to happen to get that poison out of my body so I can heal and get better. But yet we live in a culture that would say, take something to stop the vomiting, take something to stop the diarrhea and suppress the fever. How logical is that? And we would call it good health care in... in Good practice if it made you feel better. Well, it held poisons in your body that are killing you. Right? We got to flip-flop this thing. I'm here tonight because I believe that this message is simple. I think that it's profound. And I think that it's just forgotten in our culture. Nowhere in life did someone teach me these basic principles so that I could use my resources and assets in a way 
to in, improve the quality of my life by improving the quality of me, right? So what controls function in your body? Your nerve system, right? Your brain and your nerve system control every tissue, organ, and system of your body. Look, right? It's so simple. Where do the nerves in my upper back go? To my heart. Where do all these nerves go? Into my digestive organs, my reproductive organs, right? Everywhere. You, you can map it out. This shows the nerves going to all the places in the body. Your brain is the central control center, and it sends all this information out to the rest of your body to control and coordinate every tissue, organ, and system of your body all the time, right? And because your nerve system is so important, because it's so delicate, your nerve system was wrapped in bone, wasn't it? I mean, your skull was wrapped in bone. What's the only organ in the human body that's completely surrounded by bone? Your brain and your spinal column. Why? Because it's the most important, right? And it's the most fragile. It needs taken care of the most, right? And wh what, what is responsible for taking care of that? If you just, everybody just take your finger, for, take your pinky finger for a second and stick it right there on your neck. You feel that? It's kind of a sensitive spot on your body, isn't it? Right? That's where your brain stem is at. That's literally the control center. It controls and coordinates all the functions of your body. Right? It'd be like if we were all in here just playing instruments, right? But we weren't, we, we weren't being orchestrated by anyone. What would happen? It would sound horrible. But if we had something to coordinate that and orchestrate that, what would happen? It would sound beautiful. That's what your nerve system does. It coordinates and orchestrates all the functions of your body. So you need your nerve system to be in balance. And you, what happens is, is that when our spine is distorted or damaged or moved out of place, what does it do to that nerve system that's inside it? It damages it, doesn't it? See, the normal spine, when you look at it, looks like this. It should be straight from the front, right? And from the side, it should have a forward curve, a backward curve, and a forward curve. You can see the nerves coming out of here, right? Those are the nerves to all the tissues, organs, and cells of your body. But what happens is research says that when that is distorted, it damages those nerves. It blocks the information from your brain to your body, and it, makes, it disrupts the coordination of the orchestra that's happening inside your body. A simple example of that is Christopher Reeves, right? What happened to Christopher Reeves? He fell off a horse. Did he smash his legs so bad that they wouldn't work? No, he damaged his neck. Did he damage his lungs and he fell? No, but he damaged his neck. If Christopher Reeves doesn't fall off that horse, is he with us here today? Most likely he is, right? <laughs> so damaging your nerve system is life-threatening, right? I mean, what is it when someone's spine is all twisted up like this? What do we call that? Scoliosis, right? What happens if scoliosis gets real bad? What do we do? We cut through seven layers of muscle. We snip off the tips of these bones. We straighten it and put rods on it to hold it straight. Why would we do that? Why would we do that? Because it's life-threatening if we don't, right? Because it's going to damage the nerves and shut off the organs and tissues of our body. So listen, medicine knows, healthcare knows that your spine being out of, your out of alignment is terrible for your health, or they wouldn't go in and fix these scoliosis. All they're saying is if it's not bad enough to show us a disease, then we're not going to do anything about it. But once it gets severe enough to cause a disease, then we'll do something. We're saying that model doesn't work. That's the model that's costing us to go bankrupt, waiting for people to have problems. Why wouldn't we check the body for misalignments and correct them sooner, right? The research says as simple as a few degrees of angulation in the spine is enough to cause damage and interference to the nerves. Well, what happens if you cause damage or interference to the nerve, to your kidney, to your livers, to your intestines? We don't think of it that way, right? But yet we think if I had a distorted spine or a damaged spine, I would feel it. Do you feel your arteries clogging right now? Do you feel those first cancer cells forming? Well, why not? Shouldn't you feel that? Right? Just because you can't feel the first signs and symptoms of a problem doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Oh yeah, leave the misalignment, the subluxation in your spine for 30 or 40 years, you'll feel it. Your discs will be herniated, they'll be deteriorating, you'll have arthritis building up, you'll have entrapment of nerves. And then what? Then, you, then we want the miracle cure? <laughs> Guys, nurture your most important asset now, right? 
take care of your spine and nerve system now. Right? Now is the time to do it. Now is the time to take care of your health. Now is the time to do what you know is right. Increased thoracic hump and loss of cervical arc and mortality. People that lost their cervical curve and, their, and had a hump in their back had up to a 15 year decrease in lifespan. If any condition had an up to 15 year decrease lifespan, would we all know about it? Wouldn't we be doing something about it? So why are we neglecting the lifeline of our body, our brain and our nerve system and our spine? How do we get health? Make it or buy it? If you could make it or buy it, they would have bought it, right? Warren Buffett's got prostate cancer. Steve Jobs isn't here, right? Billions of dollars didn't stand in the way. If there was a drug, they could own it. If there was a surgery, they could buy it, right? How can we get, how, how do we get healthy? We, we are born with health, guys. That is my message to you. You lack nothing. You were born with an innate intelligence, an inborn intelligence to control and coordinate every tissue, organ, and cell of your body. And that will function properly unless we interfere with it. Does that make sense? It's not that you lack something to be healthy. That's what we've been taught, right? What percentage of health conditions are genetic? Four. At the highest level, 4% of health conditions are genetic, right? That's what the, the greatest genetic research tells us. If there was a 4% chance of rain, would you carry an umbrella? Well, if there was a 4% chance of it being genetic, then would you focus on that or would you focus on the 96 other percent? Was what's the 96% about? You taking care of your body, environment, you doing the right things, right? Health, lack of health is due to interference to your body's proper functioning mechanisms. Damage to your spine is an interference to those inner, internal mechanisms. The problem is people were waiting for back pain and neck pain and numb hands to take care of their spine instead of saying, did anybody check the wire to my heart? Did anybody check the wire to my kidney? Did anybody check the wire to my intestines? Guys, we see miracles happen every single day. Every single day, miracles happen. Not because I'm great, but because your body is abundantly great and miraculous. And if you remove interference to your nerve system by correcting the alignment of your spine, you can restore that health and balance back into your body. So, that's the message. The message is health is innate, you're born with it, right? Could your body control your blood sugar when you were a week old? 96% of the people will say, yeah. And I'll say, then why can't it now? Did your genes change between then and now? Or did your environment interfere with the proper functioning of your body? I hope this information was a gift to you tonight, because that's my intent, right? To share this gift of knowledge that I think is transformational. But I know that this knowledge has value only if you take action. Doing nothing with it has little benefit for your future. Taking action does. My recommendation to you tonight is to get your spine checked.